Good evening. Today we'll be looking at Proverbs 14 and 15, as well as continuing to look at the heretical text, the Gospel of Thomas. I'm sharing this with my Facebook page. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we pray for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for peace in our families. Peace for those who are alone, afraid, angry, stressed, sad. Pray for healing for the sick, wisdom for doctors, scientists, and leaders version of souls and that all of us may be saved. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's jump right in to Proverbs 14. And I'll just share this in the comments. The wisest of women builds her house, but folly with her own hands tears it down. So this is talking to wives, how their wisdom can build up their house, their thriftiness, uh, or wives or mothers. I guess they didn't have... They didn't have the idea of single women as often. Whoever walks in uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is devious in his ways despises him. So uprightness, being good is a way of serving God. Being good is a way of following God, is showing the fear of the Lord through acting justly. By the mouth of a fool comes a rod for his back, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Be prudent in what you say. Where there are no oxen, the man the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. So hard work takes a lot of mess. Investment takes a lot of mess. Change makes a lot of mess. But then you get abundance to these things. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out lies. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out lies. Uh, so you want to be a good witness in court. Verse 6 of Proverbs 14, a scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding. Leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. So don't spend time around those who are going to bring you down. Don't spend time around those who are speaking nonsense. The wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way, but the folly of fools is deceiving. The folly of fools is deceiving. So when you see somebody who's foolish and you hear what they say, you think that they're wise, but they're not. Fools mock at the guilt offering, but the upright enjoy acceptance. So the guilt offering was what you would bring as an apology for your sins. Foolish people think that it's silly to seek forgiveness of sins. Verse 10, the heart knows its own bitterness, and no stranger shares its joy.
So each person has their own emotions. Each person has their own experiences in life. Um, and when we are um, being bitter for the wrong things, nobody else will know. If we're being joyful for the good things, um, people won't necessarily know either. So having peace and joy in our hearts affects us more than affects others. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. Again, in justice, in eternity, these things will happen, though in practice we sometimes see that they don't happen. In our lived experience. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Here in the Good News translation, they say, what you think is the road, the right road may lead to death. So this idea of just because we think something is right doesn't mean that it's right. And so we have to always be learning, always be seeking wisdom from God and others. Even in laughter, the heart may ache, and the end of joy may be grief. So sometimes you, it looks like somebody is happy, for instance, on Instagram or Facebook, oh, look how happy their life is. But then when you see them in person, you see that their, their life is sad. So there is suffering there. The backslider in heart will be filled with the fruit of his ways, and a good man will be filled with the fruit of his ways. So... This is, again, kind of the idea of karma, but as we see, it's related more to virtue. So if you plot evil, if you lie, you will be surrounded by lies. It's kind of the, as a logical conclusion. The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Prudent gives thought to his steps. So don't believe everything that you hear. Verse 15, the simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. So we can do things without thought, without forethought, without planning. But if we're wise, we will plan things out. A man of quick temper acts foolishly, and a man of evil devices is hated. A man of quick temper acts foolishly. So if you're angry and you get angry quickly, you do something that you will regret. And then if you do evil things, people will hate you. You will be disliked. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. So this idea of this difference between prudence and kind of recklessness. The evil doubt bow down before the good, the wicked at the gates of the righteous. In Good News Translation, it says evil people will have to bow down to the righteous and humbly beg their favor. Um, so again, this would be kind of a something that we would see in the next life in heaven. The poor is disliked even by his neighbor, but the rich has many friends. Um, and this is as a consequence of their money. 
So not because they're inherently good, but because they have money, people seek to be their friends. Whoever despises his neighbor is a sinner, but blessed is he who is generous to the poor. So you see this, um, it is good to be generous, it is good to help others rather than to despise and hate um, our neighbors. Do they not go astray who devise evil? Those who devise good meet steadfast love and faithfulness. Um, so they who devise good meet, meaning earn steadfast love and faithfulness. So good people will get a good reward, bad people will get a bad reward. In all toil there is profit, but mere talk tends only to poverty. So it's better to work, to do, than to say. The crown of the wise is their wealth, but the folly of fools brings folly. So this idea, um, wisdom leads to wealth, but foolishness brings more foolishness, kind of the, the idea of that. A truthful witness saves lives, but one who breathes out lies is deceitful. So it's very good if you're ever in court to be honest. If somebody asks you about something, to always respond with honesty. The fear of, in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. The fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. So, Fear of the Lord helps us when we're able to trust in God rather than our own strength. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, the one that one may turn away from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. This fear of the Lord, this having this right relationship with God, it turns us to life. It protects us from death. In a multitude of people is the glory of a king, but without people, a prince is ruined. So uh, I think this is wisdom to a king. You can't be a leader if you don't have any followers. So you have to take care of and help those who are in your kingdom, because without them, you are not a king. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Getting angry gets you in trouble. Getting angry leads you to do foolish things. Rather, you should be slow to anger and act measured. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh. But envy makes the bones rot. So peace rather than envy. If you are envious of other people, it will dig down and hurt you. If you are, um, if you are at peace, this will give you help. But if you're envious and jealous of others, this causes you problems. Whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker, but he who is generous to the needy honors him. So there are many ways that we can oppress the poor. We can take advantage of them because they are unable to look out for their long-term good because they don't have the luxury of doing that. 
say, oh, I need food or I will starve. And you say, well, give me all of your money, all of your future money. Take a loan for 20% or 30% as a way of oppressing this poor man. Verse 32, the wicked is overthrown through his evil doing, but the righteous finds refuge in his death. In the Good News Translation, it says, Wicked people bring about their own downfall by their evil deeds, but good people are protected by their integrity. Um, so some ancient translations say integrity, but the Hebrew says death. So the, the fall of the wicked person is their own wrongdoing. Okay, so that makes sense. But the righteous finds refuge in death, so meaning at death, entering into heaven, you find refuge, or the righteous finds refuge in his integrity, which makes a little bit more sense uh, that because he does right, other people trust him. This could be seen in a movie like A Wonderful Life. It's A Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. This would kind of be the idea of that movie. Wisdom rests in the heart of a man of understanding, but it makes itself known even in the midst of fools. Wisdom rests in the heart of a man of understanding, but it makes itself known even in the midst of fools. So, Somebody who's seeking to understand they have wisdom within them. But then even when there are people who are foolish, there is still always the opportunity to turn to wisdom. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So the, the righteousness of people and the righteousness of leaders helps that nation, but their sin is a punishment to them. You see, the, see this in corruption. Um, you see this in um, as crime rates go up, uh, poverty or real estate prices go down. And so this, the, the very crime of the city punishes the city. A servant who deals wisely has the king's favor, but his wrath falls on one who acts shamefully. A servant who deals wisely has the king's favor, but his wrath falls on one who acts shamefully. So, acting wisely, and you'll get the favor of God or the favor of your boss. Uh, act shamefully, and you will not. Okay. Now, ESV, the Proverbs chapter 15. Share that in the comments. These are, these, uh, some of these are difficult to understand. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So again, against anger and quick temperedness, I think that's very important. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. So surround yourself with one wise people because they will say wise things, not foolish people who will say foolish things. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. God sees you. 
God sees us. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it, in it breaks the spirit. Gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. So speaking calmly, speaking patiently, speaking peacefully. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. So listen when people correct you. In the house of the righteous, there is much trouble, but trouble befalls the income of the wicked. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. I think I might have said that wrong. So righteousness leads to good. Wickedness leads to downfall. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so the hearts of the fools. There's a lot of repetition within these proverbs. Right? It's, I think most of you are catching that. Um, similar ideas being repeated in different ways. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord but the prayer of the upright is acceptable to him. So if you're wicked and then you think you're going to make sacrifices, that will not be good. Rather, live righteously rather than living wickedly and making sacrifices. But the prayer of the upright is acceptable to him. So the prayer, when, when you're upright, then God will hear your prayers. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who pursues righteousness. There is severe discipline for him who forsakes the way. Whoever hates reproof or correction will die. Sheol and Abaddon lie open before the Lord. How much more the hearts of the children of men. So Sheol and Abaddon are the places of the death of the dead, similar to Hades and hell. And so they, God can see into them, so why wouldn't God be able to see into our hearts? Makes sense. A scoffer does not like to be reproved. He will go to the wise. He will not go to the wise. Someone who's a scoffer, someone who is foolish, does not seek correction or wisdom. A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit is crushed. A glad heart makes a cheerful face. So if your interior life is good, your, your exterior life will shine. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed on folly. So some people, they're always looking for silliness. They're always looking for, rather than for truth, they're looking for the next newest thing. You see some TV, which would be called kind of low quality television, um, or maybe trash television, where it's just gossip. It's, it's nothing of substance, nothing of importance. Um, folly. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but the cheerful of heart has a continual feast. So those who have a good interior life, those who have peace and joy in their heart, every day is like a feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. So this, I think, is a This is an explanation of many of the other proverbs that it is better to have peace and to have the Lord in your heart than to have an abundance of goods. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fattened ox and hatred with it. So this answers the question, is it better to marry for love or to marry for money? Marry for love. A hot tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contentions. 
So we don't want to be slow to anger. Rather, we want, I mean, we do want to be slow to anger rather than quick tempered. The way of a sluggard is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a level highway. So it's very difficult to get through a hedge of thorns. And so the life of somebody who's lazy is very difficult, but someone who is upright is smooth, it's like a level highway. So you move quickly. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. So wisdom <sighs> makes your parents glad, but foolishness means you don't care for the wisdom of your parents. You don't listen to them. Folly is a joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight ahead. Folly is a joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight ahead. Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. It's very important to constantly seek advice, to seek help so that your plans will succeed. To make an apt answer is a joy to a man, and a word in season, how good it is. So apt. What a joy it is to find just the right word for the right occasion. I think that's good. Uh, I want to look and see what the word apt is. Appropriate or suitable in the circumstance. Okay. Pretty good. The path of life leads upward for the prudent that he may turn away from Sheol beneath. So good life leads to, uh, leads to God rather than away from him. The Lord tears down the house of the proud, but maintains the widow's boundaries. So humble yourself, you'll be exalted. Exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. Matthew 23, 12, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but gracious words are pure. Jesus talks about how we can have sins of our thought. Matthew 5, 28, but I say anyone who looks, even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5, 28. Whoever is greedy for unjust gain troubles his own household, but he who hates bribes will live. Don't accept bribes. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. So the heart of the righteous, they're thinking about what's right, how to answer, how to make a good response. The wicked person is just talking and talking and talking. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and good news refreshes the bones. So when we hear good news, when we see light, when we see good things, beautiful things, this brings joy to our heart. The ear that listens to life gives reproof. Will dwell among the wise. The ear that listens to life giving reproof will dwell among the wise. So listen when people give you good advice. Whoever ignores instruction despises himself, but he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. So it's one thing to ignore instruction, that's bad. 
Another thing, to listen to instruction, that's good. The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom, and humility comes before honor. So the way to get wisdom is to fear the Lord. The way to get honor is through humility. That concludes our reading of the Proverbs for today. Now we're going to look uh, everybody's favorite time, joke time. So this is 50 jokes, one joke from each 50 states from Reader's Digest. When a visitor to a town in Alabama spotted a dog attacking a boy, he grabbed the animal and throttled it with his bare hand. An impressed reporter saw the incident and told him the next day's headline would scream, Valiant local man saves child by killing vicious animal. I'm not from this town, said the hero. Then the report, reporter said, it will say Alabama man saves child by killing dog. Actually, said the man, I'm from New Hampshire. In that case, the reporter grumbled. The headline will be Yankee kills family pet. An Alaskan was on trial in Anchorage. The prosecutor leaned menacingly toward him and said, where were you on the night of April to July? On, when, where were you on the night of October to April? So the idea of uh, it's night for a long time because of the tilt of the earth. It's so hot in Arizona. Cats are cows are giving evaporated milk. An Arkansas state trooper pulls over a pickup truck on I-40. He says to the driver, got any ID? The driver says, ID about what? Like idea. Interesting. What is every Californian's favorite part about the winter? Watching all the bad weather on TV. Colorado, how do you know you're in the presence of a real Coloradan? He carries his $3,000 mountain bike on top of his $500 car. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Thomas. This is a heretical text um, somewhere between the year 50 and the year 150 AD, and it is Gnostic meaning that they think that there's a secret knowledge that saves us rather than God who saves us. Verse 28. Jesus said, I took my stand in the midst of the world, and in flesh I appeared to them. I found them all drunk, and I did not find any of them thirsty. My soul ached for the children of humanity, because they are blind in their hearts and do not see, for they came into the world empty, and they also seek to depart from the world empty. But meanwhile, they are drunk. When they shake off their wine, then they will change their ways. So similar to when Jesus says, Come to um, let me see if I can find this. And Jesus is talking to uh, or so Isaiah fifty five one is anyone thirsty come and drink even if you have no money. Come, take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. And then you have um, Jesus say that I am the living water. And he's talking to the Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4. Where can you get this living water?
Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So similar, uh, and that's John 4, 14, similar to the Gospel of Thomas, uh, but not exactly. Verse 29, Jesus said, if the flesh came into being because of spirit, that is a marvel, but if spirit came into being, being because of the body, that is a marvel of marvels. Yet I marvel at how this great wealth has come to dwell in this poverty. Uh, the great wealth, I guess, is the spirit, and the poverty is the body. So I guess is this idea that the body is bad or irrelevant. That would be a Gnostic idea that the body is irrelevant. Jesus said, where there are three deities, they are divine. Where there are two or one, I am with that one. Um, not sure what that means. I mean, maybe it's a corruption of the idea of the Trinity. Gospel of Thomas, heretical Gospel of Thomas 31. Jesus said, no prophet is welcome on his home, own, his home turf. Doctors don't cure those who know them. Um, this is similar to Luke 4.24. No prophet is accepted in his hometown. And before this, Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what you have heard, what we have heard that you have done in Capernaum. So similar. Verse 32, Jesus said, a city built on a high hill and fortified, can't, uh, and fortified cannot fall, nor can it be hidden. Similar again to Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 33, Jesus said, What you will hear in your ear, in the other ear, proclaim from your rooftop. Um, This is another Bible verse, Matthew 10, 27. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. After all, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, nor does one put it in a hidden place. Rather, one puts it on a lampstand so that all who come and go will see the light. Luke eleven thirty three 33, or Matthew 5, 15. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand. So similar. So one thing that we can see is the similarities in these texts would give us more evidence for the, the, the ancient origin of the authentic Gospels uh, and the trustworthiness of these passages of the authentic Gospels. 34, Jesus said, if a blind person leads a blind person, both of them will fall in a hole. Matthew 15, verse 13 through 14, leave them, they are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Verse 35, Jesus said, One can't enter a strong person's house and take it by force without trying his hand. Then one can loot his house. Matthew 12, 29, How can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Verse 36, Jesus said, Do not fret from morning to evening and from evening to morning about your food, what you're going to eat, or what you're 
about your clothing, what you're going to wear. You're much better than the lilies, which neither card nor spin. This is a Bible verse, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, about what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Verse 25, see how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. As for you, when you have no garment, what will you put on? Who might add to your stature? That very one will give you your garment. So God makes you taller, so he'll give you clothes as well, I guess is what that means. 37, his disciples said, when will, we, when will you appear to us and when will we see you? Jesus said, when you strip without being ashamed and you take your clothes and put them under your feet like little children and trample them, then you will see the son of the living one and you will not be afraid. Not sure what that is means. Something to do with nudity. Apparently, possibly related to baptism. So I'm not sure. Verse 38, Jesus said, often you have desired to hear these sayings that I am speaking to you, and you have no one else from whom to hear them. Therefore, will there will be days when you will seek me and you will not find me. John 7, verse 34, you will look for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Kind of similar. Now I'll do a few more. Verse 39, Jesus said, the Pharisees and the scholars have taken the keys of knowledge and have hidden them. They have not entered, nor have they allowed those who want to enter to do so. As for you, be as sly as snakes and as simple as doves. So, They have not entered, and they allow others to, not to do so. Matthew 23, they tie up heavy burdens but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. I guess maybe similar to that. And then sly as foxes, sly as serpents. We see that in Matthew 10, 16, be as cunning as a snake, inoffensive as a dove. Verse 40, Jesus said, a grapevine has been planted apart from the Father. Since it is not strong, it will be pulled up by its root and will perish. Uh, similar to the, the vine that's torn down because it doesn't bear good fruit. Jesus said, whoever has something in hand will be given more, and whoever has nothing will be deprived of even the little they have. Matthew 25, verse 29. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Jesus said, be passers-by. Not sure what that means. 
His disciples said to him, Who are you to say these things to us? You don't understand who I am from what I say to you. Rather, you have become like the Judeans, for they love the tree but hate its fruit, or they love the fruit but hate the tree. Um, so I guess this would be similar to... Matthew 11, verse 4, Jesus re replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and a tree will be known by its fruits. The tree will be known by its fruits. Luke 6, 43 through 40, 45. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Similar. Passage, uh, verse 44 of the heretical Gospel of Thomas. Jesus said, whoever blasphemes against the Father will be forgiven, and whoever blasphemes against the Son will be forgiven, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either on earth or in heaven. Similar. Similar to a Bible verse, um, Matthew 12, verse 32 or 22. Uh, verse 31, therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever sin speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. So similar text. Now this one in 44, it says also blasphemy against the Father um, is forgivable. Now, the idea of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, this is the idea that our sins cannot be forgiven, the idea that God cannot forgive us or reconcile us, that our sins are bigger than God. And then here we'll read this last verse. Jesus said, grapes are not harvested from thorn trees, nor are figs gathered from thistles, for they yield no fruit. Good persons produce good from what they've stored up. Bad persons produce evil from what the wickedness they've stored up in their hearts and say evil things. For from the overflow of the heart, they produce evil. Luke 6, 44, each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart um, and the evil man brings evil things so very similar as well so what we can see as we're reading this um, maybe so far it's been 75 percent very similar to the scriptures and then 25 percent something different so this is uh, becomes hard because when you read something like this you say oh is this the bible is this true how do i tell what's good and what's bad? How can I determine from within this? And so this is why we talk about um, having a, a church, one of the reasons that, that can interpret for us um, how to understand God, that we can have the witness of the apostles and the authority of the apostles and their successors and the promise of God that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. God bless you.